TPRDF, predominantly led by the TPLF, ruled Ethiopia from 1991 to 2018 under an ethnic-based federalism. This period was marked by systematic and ethnically motivated human rights violations in the form of extrajudicial killings, displacements, and arbitrary arrests, amongst others, particularly against the Amhara ethnic group, which is one of the largest ethnic groups in Ethiopia. Attacks against Amharas in the Oromia region of Ethiopia started during the socialist region and became frequent after EPRDF came to power in 1991. But the scale of casualties and frequency of massacres increased significantly after Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed came to power. In 2021 and 2022 alone, the Amara Association of America has documented at least 52 large-scale massacres where thousands of Amara civilians were killed. Currently, the number of Amaras ethnically cleansed from Oromia region and are in need of immediate humanitarian assistance is close to 1 million. Amara Association of America believes the atrocities against Amaras in Oromia region have fulfilled the definition of genocide a long time ago. As someone who spends countless hours documenting the genocide, the constant ask from survivors is a plea for help and to let the world know what's happening to Amaras in Oromia. They wonder why human rights organizations, the UN, and other actors have not been vocal about these atrocities. As part of efforts to address the human rights situation of ethnic Amaras in the Oromia region, the Amara Association of America and the Center for Human Rights on 6 February 2023 submitted a communication to the African Commission on Human and People's Rights. The communication submitted to the African Commission on Human and People's Rights argues that the failure of the government of Ethiopia to stop the human rights violation committed against ethnic Amaras in the Oromia region by state agents such as the Oromia Special Forces and non-state agents such as the Oromia Liberation Army is a violation of the obligations of the state of Ethiopia under the African Charter on Human and People's Rights. Some of the violations highlighted in the communication include the violation of the right to non-discrimination and equality before the law, the violation of the right to life and security of the person, and the violation of the right to freedom of movement, particularly internal freedom of movement within the Federation of Ethiopia. The reliefs sought in the communication include a declaration by the African Commission that the state of Ethiopia is in violation of its rights under the African Charter on Human and People's Rights. The communication further urges the Commission to recommend that the state of Ethiopia takes step to remedy the violation of um, human rights of ethnic Amaras in the Oromia region. Some of the remedies suggested in the communication include the investigation and prosecution of perpetrators of human rights violation against Amara residents in the Oromia region. The communication also suggests that the state of Ethiopia should take measures to address the plight of internally displaced Amara residents in the Oromia region. The government of Ethiopia should also amend discriminatory laws in the Federation of Ethiopia. We hope this complaint will draw attention to the atrocities against Amaras in the Oromia region and begin the process of justice and accountability. If the Commission finds that the submitted communication did indeed raise an allegation of violation of the African Charter, it will seize itself of the communication and notify the parties concerned about the seizure of the communication. The next step will then be for the African Commission to determine the admissibility of the case and in the event that the Commission did find in favour of admissibility of the case, the Commission would then proceed to determine the merit of the case and adopt its decision. The Center for Human Rights with its partners is bringing this case against Ethiopia because Ethiopia is a state party to the African Charter on Human and People's Rights. It's been a state party since 1998 and under the Charter, Ethiopia commits itself to uphold 
the rights of its own nationals, people under its jurisdiction, the right to liberty, bodily security, integrity, the right to life. But not only to respect, in other words, to not interfere in these rights, but also to protect these rights. That would mean to ensure that non-state actors such as paramilitary groups are not allowed to invade, erode, violate the rights of the Ethiopian people. All these rights we allege on the facts have been violated. And also the particular right in the African Charter, the right of peoples to peace and security. The case is brought before the African Commission on Human and People's Rights. The African Commission is the African Union's human rights watchdog. And it is important that this would be a body of African experts assessing the available evidence and making a finding whether there has been a violation of a right in the Charter. So it doesn't leave the door open to Ethiopia to make allegations or to contend that somehow these are external forces that are predisposed in a particular way against Ethiopia. No, this is an African Union body of independent experts to whom this evidence has been provided and that will make the decision. And for the moment, Ethiopia has not yet accepted the jurisdiction of the African Court on Human and People's Rights. Therefore, the only option really is to take it to this commission which gives recommendations, but these recommendations are persuasive and should be observed and followed by the state concerned. The Center for Human Rights and the Amhara Association of America vow to continue to advocate for the rights of Amhara residents that are based in the Oromia region until all massacres and discrimination against them is brought to hold and until all the perpetrators of the injustices are brought to book. We further call and urge other human rights organizations and institutions such as the Ethiopian Human Rights Commission to closely monitor the situation, investigate, document and further bring to book the perpetrators of these injustices. We call on civil society organizations as well as faith-based institutions that are based in Ethiopia to engage in advocacy campaigns such as social media campaigns to to raise awareness against these injustices that are committed against the Amhara residents based in Oromia region. And finally, we would like to call upon the Ethiopian government and humbly urge and ask the government to stop all the human rights violations by its security um, apparatus, especially the Oromia-based security forces. We would like to call on the Ethiopian government to ensure that all the human rights of the, all the peoples in Ethiopia are safely guarded and respected and protected.